1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17, are the commonly accepted verses describing the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. From these verses, we clearly see that immediately before the rapture, the dead in Christ will be resurrected. This event is accompanied by a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dissension of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15.52 describes the same event and gives us additional information. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It says that the rapture will take place instantly, in the twinkling of an eye, and will give the resurrected dead and the remaining saints glorified incorruptible bodies. It also clarifies the trumpet by defining it as the last trumpet. In Revelation 11, 15 through 18, we read about the seventh and last trumpet. Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 18. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. These verses further clarify Christ's return by showing that this event not only brings the resurrection, but also the wrath of God. And in Revelation 19.11 through 20, verse 6, we are given even further clarification of this return. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, through chapter 20, verse 6. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them 
in the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The passages describe the final battle between the beast system and Jesus Christ and the rewarding of the saints. This is clearly identified as the first resurrection and applies specifically to the saints. And we know that the first resurrection immediately precedes the rapture. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4, show clearly that the rapture will not take place until the falling away and the revelation of the man of sin. Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 Now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And finally, in Jesus' own descriptions of the last days, found in Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31, and Mark 13, verses 24 through 27, he describes the rapture, identified by the sounding of the trumpet, and the angels gathering together the elect, as taking place immediately after the tribulation of those days. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels 
with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 27. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. The evidence of the scriptures is crystal clear. Will you submit to it?